This podcast is brought to you by Contessa Digital. You want to know how I found out I was being love bombed in a relationship? It all starts with a teddy bear and me thinking that someone had broken into my apartment. Welcome to Confidently Cherished. My name is Keisha Rice. I'm a dating coach and hypnotherapist. I help progressive women of faith learn how to heal from their unhealthy relationship patterns and attract healthy, loving relationships without compromising their values, their identity, or their sanity. So back to this love bombing incident. Now, if you don't know what love bombing is, this is when you are in a relationship with someone and the beginning feels like this whirlwind, this roller coaster, because they're doing all of these great things for you. And it feels like they're just so romantic and they're so into you. But eventually you start to realize that First of all, all of these romantic gestures are team too much. And second, that it is a manipulation tactic because what love bombers will do is shower you with so much love and attention and, you know, all of this affection at the beginning of a relationship. And then they will pull back more and more and more to the point of which you are getting none of that. And because you've gotten so attached to them and because you now think that you're in love because of how great things were at the beginning, then you become hesitant to leave. And even when this person is no longer affectionate or even downright abusive, you are hesitant to get out of the relationship. So again, my love bombing story. For this to make sense, you have to know that I'm not obsessed, but I do like stuffed animals. And I have a few stuffed animals that I have held on to since childhood because these stuffed animals come with stories. And with these stories, I they have very sentimental value. So for example, I have a bear that my brother gave me while I was in the hospital one time after a surgery. Things like that. So again, all of these stuffed animals come with stories. And while I love them, you know, they're held on to because they come with specific sentimental values. Now, I was dating this guy. And from the day that we met, he was on the love bombing kick. I mean, so we met, we were both out with friends at the time. And he insisted on, you know, paying for my food and and for my drinks and everything, which was a nice gesture. But then he and I started talking a little bit and he suggested that we go someplace and that like he buy me a gift. And I told him, no, I want to, you know, talk to him, get to know him and all of that. But just from the very beginning, this was someone who was... It seemed like just very, very into me with the wanting to buy stuff, wanting to do things, wanting to give compliments. And while that sounds nice, it was to a level that it was kind of exhausting, right? So again, you know, met this guy, we're talking for a couple of weeks and I mentioned the stuffed animal thing to him. Next thing I know, he buys me this huge stuffed bear and when I say huge this thing was like human size this thing was bigger than me and I remember having it delivered to my apartment and being like one what is this and two what the heck am I going to do with it because at the time I lived in a very very tiny apartment and there wasn't a lot of space And also, at that time, I was getting ready to go out of town on a trip. So I didn't really have a lot of time to think about this. So I get the bear and I just sit it in my living room. It's like facing a wall or something. And I'm like, okay, I'm 
like I was literally going out of town that day. So I was like, okay, I will just handle this whenever I get back. I will figure it out then because right now ain't nobody got time, right? So I go on my vacation. I forget all about this daggone bear until it is time for me to come back from my vacation. I come back at night and again, bear is the last thing on my mind. So I come back at night and it's kind of like dust time. You know what I mean? So it's not pitch black. And this apartment had like a fair amount of natural lighting, you know, outdoor lighting and all nearby. There were a decent number of windows. So it's not pitch black. It's just, it's kind of like around that, that sunset time where things are a little bit darker, but not completely in the dark. So when I opened the door, I didn't feel the need to immediately cut on lights. You know what I mean? So I opened the door and there is this really tall, big figure um, facing the wall with his back towards me in my apartment. And I immediately freaked the heck out. Like, who is this? How did they get into my apartment? And Then I realized that this person, when I opened the door, had absolutely no reaction because, of course, it wasn't a person. It was the bear, right? (laughs) So I cut on the lights. I calm down. Everything's good. I I get all of my stuff in the apartment and, and unpack and all of that. But I just remember being so pissed at that guy at that moment. Because in my head, all I could think was if he hadn't have gotten me that stupid bear, I wouldn't have even had that moment of freaking out. Um, If I hadn't lived in such a small apartment, I would have had another place for it. So it wouldn't have been like the thing encountering me when I entered the apartment again. Just all these things in my head. And here was the thing. I was already slightly annoyed with this man because, again, he went out of the way to over to shower me with affection again it wasn't just the spending money and and gifts and all of that it was the constant calling constant texting even when I set boundaries about that even when I told him with the schedule that I worked at the time I worked a night shift an overnight job so I wasn't going to be taking text messages phone calls late at night and I would go to bed and wake up in the morning to like a million different messages. I went on this vacation. I went out of town. And again, yes, he and I were dating, but we weren't, we hadn't been dating very long. It's not someone that I had known for a long time. And I mentioned to him like, Hey, um, going out of town, going on vacation. And because of that, you know, I'm not going to be as reachable this entire time that I was on this trip, blowing up my phone. He knew what day I was coming back. So he was blowing up my phone. Are you home yet? Are you home yet? All of these things. And at the time, I just thought of it as annoying. I didn't know really at that time because I was kind of still, this was really before my whole self-development journey began. And I was into psychology, but I wasn't studying it as much as I do now. So I wasn't as familiar with the idea of love bombing. But when I learned that word, I knew exactly that that was what this relationship was. And in order to help you avoid um, some of the situations that I went through, because that was not the only relationship I was in where love bombing occurred, we are going to do a two-part episode So we're going to talk about nine things that you should look out for, nine warning signs of love bombing. And we're going to go through five of those today and we'll do the other four next week um, in next week's episode. So make sure you watch out for that. But I hope that by helping you recognize these signs, you'll understand how to avoid being in a relationship in which you're love bombed. Because again, I have told this story before and I have heard women say, well, what's so bad about someone giving you a bunch of gifts or spending a bunch of money or wanting to spend a lot of time with you? 
And in theory, there is nothing wrong with those things. And practice, there is a such thing as too much of a good thing. And also, what love bombing is, is again, this is not someone who is just generally clingy and is always like this. When you are dealing with a love bomber, you are dealing with someone who is purposefully trying to take over your environment, um, shower you with, with affection in hopes of clouding your judgment so that eventually they can pull back from all of this affection and, and all this quote unquote love that they're showing you. And you will be so hooked that once they start treating you badly, you don't want to leave. So this is what we want to avoid. A truly healthy, loving relationship has nothing chaotic about it. It is calm and steady and peaceful. So when you have a relationship that has kind of a chaotic start like this, it's a red flag and you should run. So again, part one, the first five signs that you should take as red flags um, and that you should look out for when it comes to love bombing. So number one is you can avoid love bombing by watching for the signs. And these are the signs that I was just discussing with you. Again, there is too much of a good thing that exists. So if someone is giving you really excessive compliments, like they are complimenting you, not just the general, you look beautiful on a date, but when there's excessive compliments every five seconds, that is a red flag. Same with excessive gifts and same with constant communication. If someone is blowing up your phone from the time that you wake up till the time you go to bed or even doing it overnight, um, one is a little bit manipulative. Two, they're keeping you from having a life and, and being with other people. Like this constant time with them is going to isolate you from other people. And three, you are an ambitious woman who has things going on for you in your life. And you should want someone who's the same. So you should really question it if someone has the time to do all of that. If they have the time to constantly communicate with you like that. Like, don't they have a job? Don't they have their own goals and ambitions? Number two, you can avoid love bombing by pacing yourself. Again, healthy relationships are calm and steady and more even keeled. If you are with someone who is immediately trying to push commitment, who's immediately talking about marriage and their future faking and talking about all the things that the two of you are going to do in the future together and how you're going to get married and have kids and you're planning kids' names and talking about the house and what type of neighborhood you're going to live in and, and the dogs and talking about your retirement plans. When you've only been with someone for a few weeks, um, you need to slow the F down. This person does not know you well enough. You do not know them well enough. You need to take your time in getting to know someone. And if you say something about, you know, age or getting older and, and not having enough time and all that, look, we are living longer than ever. If you are getting married while you're in your 20s, you could potentially spend, you know, the next 60, 70 years with someone. And if you're listening to me and you're single in your 60s and you get married, you could still be spending like 20 or so years with this person. So it is much better to take your time in the beginning of the relationship, getting to know them, than to get married and then find yourself in a situation where, you know, you're paying for this for the rest of your life. Because even if you get a divorce, you know, if you brought kids into this relationship, you still have to deal with that person. Even if you don't have kids with this person, if you end up marrying them, oftentimes your families are intertwined, your social circles become intertwined. So even if you have a divorce, there's oftentimes that people still have to deal with each other 
or deal with at least having that person around because of the whole marriage situation. You know, I can think of a couple I know right now that they got together, they married pretty quickly, marriage lasted for a few years, and they divorced. But honestly, her family likes him more than they do her and because of that they're divorced but she still has to deal with him because they still insist on having him around for family events and family gatherings and he obliges so you don't want to take those those type of risk take the time to get to know someone plus beyond that if someone is truly manipulating you people are on their best behavior in the first say three months of a relationship but it is hard for them to keep up that act for too long so you need a few months to get to know someone because you need to see how they truly are after the mask comes off this is one of the reasons why people love bomb to begin with because they know they're not the greatest person so if they can you know put you in a whirlwind in the first few months and you have that high of emotions and you feel so loved and everything, again, you are going to be more reluctant to leave once their true colors shine through. So the number three thing that you need in order to avoid being love bomb is you need to set boundaries. Setting boundaries is only going to upset people who benefit by you not having boundaries. When you are intentional and clear about setting boundaries in a relationship, the people who respect those boundaries are the people who truly care about you, love you, appreciate you, and are willing to put in the work to make the relationship work. If they're not willing to respect their if they're not willing to respect your boundaries, they don't respect you. They don't truly love you. And they're more in this relationship for how it benefits them and not to be in a true partnership. So set boundaries and watch how people react to the boundaries that you set. That will tell you most of what you need to know about the relationship and how the person feels about you. The number four way that we avoid love bombing is trust your instincts. If something feels too good to be true, it typically is. You have to learn how to use your intuition and how to trust your gut. Um, There is a great book about our bodies and how, you know, symptoms in our bodies are often signs of things that are wrong in our environment. Um, It's called The Body Keeps the Score, and you should definitely check it out. But yeah, when someone is not aligned with you and the relationship is not good for you, your body will start doing little things. It will start sending up flags somehow. Like, not to be gross, but you should not be having bubble guts every time you're around someone. Um, Your stomach should not be tossy, turvy. This is not butterflies in your stomach. It is anxiety telling you that something is off. And the fifth way that we avoid love bombing is to maintain our independence. It is by having our own hobbies, having our own interests, having our own friends and support circle outside of our romantic relationships. Because those outside hobbies and friends and people operate as a counterbalance. They allow you to keep perspective in a relationship. They allow you to make sure that there's someone that you can always check in so that if you're in a relationship with someone who is love bombing you and trying to take you out of reality, you have the perspective of other people to keep you back in that reality. Um, This is so important. It is really important that Although relationships are important, romantic relationships are important, and although we may desire to have 
you know, to have that romantic partner, to have that partner in crime, to have that bestie in love. Our other relationships also give us some perspective that keeps us from becoming isolated and vulnerable to being with a partner who would take advantage of us. So again, these are the first five ways that you avoid love bombing. Um, Part two with the last four will come next week. So make sure you tune in for that. And let me know if you've ever been in a love bombing situation. Um, Message me on social media. I'm at Keisha Rice on Instagram, on TikTok, and on YouTube. So yeah, let me know what your experiences are. And also, don't forget to vote for me in the Women in Podcasting Awards. Um, You can go onto the website. I will make sure it's in the show notes. Go to the relationships category and vote for Confidently Cherish. Voting does end October 1st. So if you could give me a vote, I will be eternally grateful. I will really appreciate that. And I will talk to you soon. Love you. Hey there. So you made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means I have two things to say. One, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And two, you like me. You really like me. So I would appreciate it if you would show that like by subscribing to this podcast so that more people can hear about it and enjoy it as much as you do. And if you want to know more about any of the links that I mentioned on this episode or any guests that I've had, be sure to go to KeishaRice.com slash links. That's K-E-S-H-I-A-R-I-C-E dot com slash links. I can't wait to talk to you again in the next episode. So see you then.